You're listening to the Subject Matter Expert Podcast, powered by Kids PR Brand Story, and I'm your host, Kamar Zaman. On the show today, I have a pleasure of having with me Dennis Serikov. Dennis is a CEO at Throne PR, a public relations-based company in New York City, and he has an extensive portfolio of successful PR and digital marketing campaigns in the area of crypto and blockchain. Dennis is a great friend. We work together on many projects. And today I offered uh, Dennis to come and help me to understand public relations and especially the product announcements when they are done. Today we are discussing how we can leverage product announcements in 2022. Dennis, how are you doing today? Hello, Kamar. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dennis, uh, help us understand before we go into the topic itself. Give us a little context about you so our audience can get to know you, and then we'll go further into the question of the day. Thank you. Um, well, uh, it's a great, uh, again, a great pleasure to be here with you. And uh, let's talk about all things PR, I guess, right? Um, I actually have a background in uh, broadcast journalism. Um, I was a an anchor. I did my. I got my degree in broadcast journalism from the University of Missouri Columbia School of Journalism. It's the oldest school of journalism in the world, and. Um, uh, it uh, that's where I, that's where I got my uh, undergraduate. I also got my master's in in media management. Um, I worked for several uh, broadcast and print outlets, and uh, then I decided to switch hats and uh, to start a career in marketing and uh, mm-hmm. uh, subsequently uh, in PR because I uh, uh, found that. Uh, one of my greatest teachers um, uh, in uh, media management sequence at the University of Missouri, Professor Charlie Warner, um, uh, told us that uh, there is always um, uh, a lot of uh, differences. You can find a lot of differences between the the, the news department and the the sales and marketing department. You know, uh, because the, in the, for example, for at a TV station and. There's like two different hats that uh, uh, that uh, the 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 that they are that they exist, and uh, mm-hmm. it's it was very interesting for me to explore um, the other side, so to speak. You know, um, not only the news, uh, but kind of uh, uh, see the the business side of it, and then uh, that's what uh, when I did uh, uh, media mar- marketing for uh, media groups and media media companies. But then mm-hmm. uh, I started a company. Uh, with a focus on, uh, on uh, technology, you know, startups, yeah. and uh, yeah. worked with uh, different uh, different uh, projects uh, uh, in the past uh, five years. So that's uh, sort of the uh, the journey that um, I've been on, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, my career spans over uh, past uh, twenty plus years. Wow, uh, interesting. And uh, I'll ask you some follow up questions, but let's go into the the PR and communication. So my first Mm -hmm. question that I get asked for my clients, because most of the people come to us and say, well, I want to be in a big PR. Uh, And and I'll ask them, what do you mean by that? I want to be in a big newspaper. And Mm -hmm. can I get in there? And I said, well, let's do a PR. But they, they are expecting, most clients are expecting that, you know, I have a great story and I just want to be showing up in some, you know, newspaper Mm -hmm. and i want you to dispel the myth and if you think that's not the way to do it and what is the right way to do it so can can you help us understand (laughs) that's a great question that's a great question um i well i i i I, as much as i don't think that there is a sort of a universal recipe for everyone i think um it really the sort of the devil's in the details and you you have to look at uh, each particular um industry that the company is working in, uh, or um, maybe a different um, stage of the company, whether it's a startup or whether it's a, a well-established company, that probably the methods um, are going to be different. But mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. the same time, uh, I think that um, there are sort of universal characteristics of a successful um, campaign um, that uh, uh, that uh, companies can um, learn how to uh, to do and how to achieve great results first of all um 
I strongly believe that believe that um, there's no such thing as too much PR. You know, obviously mm-hmm. there's um, publicity is something we live in extremely and extremely um, uh, high paced um, world and uh, uh, announcements that are made they get uh, diluted, dissolved in the in the in in the, in the, in the, in the huge huge volumes of uh, sort of a cluster of uh, uh of um, media voices and mm-hmm. you, a lot of times you 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 really the attention span gets shorter and shorter but just because there's so many different media channels and so many different opportunities to uh to present yourself so the the, the it, it it's very important to consistently remind both your core audiences, which are would be sort of your internal audiences, such as maybe your social media fans or mm-hmm. uh, somebody who is subscribed to your, I don't know, uh, corporate newsletter and things yeah. like that, but also for the external audiences. And those are obviously, you know, could be the whole world or could be any particular market that mm-hmm. uh, you want to uh, uh, expand. So uh, so that the corporate uh, communication landscape has changed i believe in the past years you have to be creative mm-hmm. uh look at what elon musk is doing with each announcement yeah. surprises everybody yeah. you know and mm-hmm. like just now i read that he announced uh, uh a new product uh, the, the, the the phone right he announced yeah. it uh and surprised everybody you know so so mm-hmm. you have to really become creative with both the the, the messaging itself mm-hmm. and uh, with uh, the 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 structure sort of the way the way you do it so I, I, I don't know. I can go uh, uh, further into details and into more like the recipes, but stop yeah. me if you, if you think we're uh, we're deviating from. Yeah, let's from let's slow matter. down and um, I can ask you the follow on question. So you you just made a statement right now and you said that there are two audiences, internal and external. I've never heard somebody say that in the way you explained it. So a lot of people think, okay, I'm going to do an announcement and they always think about external. They never think about internal communication. So even doing a PR to your internal communication is important because you must remind people that we exist. And here's another announcement, like you said, you know, Mm-hmm. mentioned Elon. So that's a great thing. So now help me understand, you've been doing PR marketing 20 years. What has changed in those last 19 years? And then last year was a <laughs> very disruptive year yes, yes, for everyone yes, yes. with COVID-19. So help us understand that. Um, yes, definitely the past, uh, I would say it's almost two years, right? I think yeah. in February will uh, unfortunately... Uh, not celebrate, but will mark uh, the the two year anniversary of the grim events in in the world when the coronavirus has hit um, and disrupted mm-hmm. all our lives. Um, definitely, I mean, it's probably really hard to, to to try to reflect uh, on uh, all these years, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, in the media, there are there are a lot of different things, and uh, I remember studying uh, PR. Um, our uh, professor in college uh, of public relations was a senior. Uh, PR person from um, uh, working for IBM uh, in, mm-hmm. at headquarters in Chicago, I believe. Uh, and I remember completely different what PR was back then and what the uh, what the uh, PR is now. So if you're talking about just a an overall campaign, you know, you have to be very crisp with messaging. You have to be uh, language has to be. Um, uh, uh, certain, you know, s- 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 structure, sentence structures, and and uh, even even the the delivery of the messaging has to be um, uh, sort of on on par with uh, with the reality. Uh, definitely, uh, 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 in the past two years, uh, I think that um, uh, we have shifted to. Uh, uh, not working in offices and working a lot of comp- people are working from home. Journalists are working from yeah. home. Uh, you, you know, keep, keep, let's keep in mind that uh, uh, PR, press releases, they they are primarily, their function is um, to inform uh, media and media representatives. Mm-hmm. So uh, traditionally, uh, for example, there were certain rules that yeah, corporate rules, so to speak, that yeah. were set by larger corporate, you know, publicly, maybe sometimes public traded companies and, and others that there are certain standards to, you know, uh, when you you make the announcement of your of your 
achievement or or milestone yeah. or something you know it could be on a certain time certain day tuesday yeah. thursday we're supposed to be like the best day to announce things but things are slightly different because uh it's it's not nine to five anymore uh yeah. i think that's one of the biggest things uh, issues yeah. is that sometimes uh, uh, we uh journalists are working on different schedules and different time zones i think we, we have become a global world so you have to consider uh, for example i have several clients that uh that i work with they cater to particular time zones that are not necessarily mm -hmm. western nine to five they they um they cater to uh, asian markets when they open and yeah. uh, so these announcements are ma made at night you know yeah. so so the it's it's there's uh, so many factors and so many different layers right uh it probably impossible to um you know to mention all of them uh within one particular sure. call but but mm -hmm. i think overall the the, the 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 core the main things are that uh it's more competitive mm -hmm. uh that uh the it's not as structured in terms of time frame because uh you you want to to get a different time zone working different time zone to get different uh audiences and markets attention it's more global and uh and then uh, you shouldn't limit yourself. I mean, one thing that you and I remember we've talked about that that yeah. a lot of a lot of times um, uh, companies and uh, their PR uh, divisions and PR heads um, they uh, heads of PR departments they they limit themselves to just announcement um, and, and forgetting that a, a, a successful uh, 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 outreach, successful uh, reach to media um, does not uh, stop. Does not stop at just uh, sending out a press release. I mean, uh, you know, sure. we've talked about that, and I'll be happy to to cover more. Sure, sure. Okay. Right. So the the key takeaway is that PR has changed from past years to the current because I remember, you know, working with PR that there was a certain date and time. If you did it like the very first time I did a PR with a big PR service. And I put nine o'clock, um, nine a.m. for the PR to go out. I got a call from the editorial and they said, "Can we make it to nine o five? And they said to me, "I said, why nine o five? It says if you do it at nine o five, you're supposed to get a better pickup." So I learned uh -huh. from that. But now that you know that changed, so things have changed. Um, exactly. Fast forward to another question: When the PR is done and you make a mistake, you know. Uh, in the in the past, it was a done deal. You know, mistakes could not be reversed. Made announcements. What's your thoughts on it? When the mistake is done, how do you uh, roll back to it? Well, uh, from, yes, from your experience those, with the clients, those, right, right, know, right. there is an operation technique which we know how to do. But how do you deal with that situation when your client says send it out, and then ten minutes later says no, no, pull it back. How do you deal with how damage do you control, right? Yeah, <laughs> the notorious uh, damage control uh, from yes. uh, whatever it is. Well, I, I, I mean, um, that's when uh, uh, great. Uh, well, usually, I mean, ideally, uh, it's it's important not to uh, you know to warn uh, and work with your company and your client that mm -hmm. and 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 warn them a million times that we're truly, you know. Uh, you know, set, setting it in stone, even though it's not, but, yeah. you know, figuratively speaking, mm -hmm. uh, whatever stays, uh, stays in the, in the, in, in, in there, um, in, in the, it goes to multiple channels, to a lot of different channels. And, uh, uh, and especially if you do a proper um, search engine optimization and other yeah. different things, which you are a great, great, great expert on that, uh, definitely on, on SEO and mm -hmm. on knowing how to uh, properly uh, run a press press release service, I, I I think you you are one of the best um, uh, you know KSPR is one of the best companies in the world that does that. I I truly believe yeah. that because I personally have tried just about every uh, service there is, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, you and I we've talked about that a lot about the competitive landscape and and other things, but. Mm -hmm. uh, back to your question. So, what do you do with it when the, you need to, uh, when there is a, 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 a you need to do some damage control, right? Um, yeah. Well, it's not easy, and it can be a costly uh, thing to do. And uh, but uh, I honestly think that 
uh, you uh, know it best uh, that they're, uh, you know, we, we obviously advise our clients to never uh, try to change to, so to, 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 to check and recheck their facts, to check and recheck their quotes mm -hmm. and uh, their statements about themselves, graphics, images, all the components that make a, a, a great visual presentation, uh, uh, even the video links, right? But yeah. uh, things do happen. And yeah. uh, there are only very few um, uh, uh, companies that it's a tedious process because, you know, think about it. We, you know, again, we've, we've talked about that. Uh, yeah. It goes to hundreds of sites. It gets Google indexed in, in, in multiple uh, uh, pages, sometimes 10 pages deep uh, yeah. on Google, right? One one release can, can, can go that deep. Uh, and then if you also uh, pitch it and you get some additional coverage uh, with that, that it becomes uh, a, a very difficult uh, task to uh, to correct something. I mean, it's possible, and yeah, you you can do it. Uh, I know, but mm -hmm. it, it it involves a, a lot of resources, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, difficult, uh, and it takes time. Uh, that's so that's to crystallize mean. it to to crystallize the answer. Tell the client uh, to basically manage the client's expectations. Things can be edited, but not that easy because uh, you know it, I know it, this happens, but right. uh, sometimes it happens with, with the mistake. Sometimes it happens because the legal departments tell them, no, um, roll back because we, we didn't cover it. So that's another thing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. sometimes the legal departments. Uh, interesting. Um, Compliance, legal departments, compl there, there's a lot of the, uh, yeah. reservations or restrictions there, hindsight, you know, but yeah. Uh, hindsight in PR is not not the best thing, as we yes, know. yes, <laughs> exactly. So because going, you know, into, yeah, go ahead. going go ahead. into uh, PR, you work with a lot of startups. Yes, okay? and you, I think ninety percent of your book of business is crypto and blockchain. Help us understand when a startup comes to you, uh, and what are their expectations out of you as a PR ninja, what are they expecting <laughs> from you? And yeah. uh, obviously you continue to deliver. So what is it that you are uh, providing to them mm -hmm. and, and, and they are getting good results? I've always wanted to ask you this question. Yes, um, and I have, a, uh, I have a, uh, an answer ready for you. Uh, I think that um, a lot of agencies, and mm -hmm. I've told it to many clients of mine, uh, they, they, uh, uh, PR industry in general has sort of, uh, sometimes not, not all of them, obviously, but, uh, sometimes in some minds of, um, uh, uh, company heads, even startups and, and other, cause a lot of these startups, uh, that I work with, they, uh, they've, uh, the CEO of the companies and people who start them, they have, uh, already built some notoriety and reputation in, in different, uh, industries and fields and in te technology, primarily, right. In tech, in tech industry. Uh, uh but they, they, and they've dealt, uh, at some point they've dealt with PR agencies and, and PR professionals and not, unfortunately, uh, sometimes, uh, our colleagues do have, uh, sort of bad rep, uh, bad reputation. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because um, I use this, um, analogy with a, um, uh, with sports, uh, I, I remember watching a, a sports it's a sports show, and a commentator was mm -hmm. was uh, talking about uh, a hockey team that did a lot of great things but just couldn't score. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a lot of times, uh, this is sort of a, a uh, not a standard, but a lot of times it, it's a practice um, that um, a company does not, uh, a PR agency, I'm sorry, uh, does not um deliver results even though they play well uh, mm -hmm. or 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 so to speak but mm -hmm. um i think uh, it's it 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 becomes frustrating because um obviously the bottom line uh, is uh, getting you exposure and uh getting uh good uh exposure and great outlets it's mm -hmm. very important to support uh, your announcement to support your news uh and uh, i think of our service uh, as um, you know, primarily not a, a PR distribution or mm -hmm. not just um, outreach, but sort of a comprehensive um, uh, 
uh, message delivery uh, sort of uh, way or system that uh, is sort of our know-how. And uh, you know, what, what, what I mean by that is that we uh, use different uh, various tools to uh, make sure uh, uh, that uh, uh, we get our message across. We use some of the best uh, outreach uh, systems we have developed relationship with uh journalists and um and uh editors that they they can um uh, trust us because again it, it comes from uh, uh from uh, from the territory uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times if you are uh, coming to pr from i don't know some general communications field or other um industries you may not uh, sometimes I, i'm not saying it's always the case but a lot of times there is a gap uh, mm -hmm. So this cognitive gap with the journalists, because journalists is a is a is a special breed, a special mm -hmm. bunch, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, if if they they sense uh, some people who understand it from the inside, who's been in the newsroom, who've been mm -hmm. on their deadlines, and it does help. You know, mm -hmm. I I work mm -hmm. for example, a couple of guys in my company, they they have ma also masters in journalism, they've been mm -hmm. uh, working uh, on on. Uh, you know, different uh, in different assignment roles and so to speak. So it's 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 much more than just a distribution. It's it's a comprehensive way with a lot of um, different insight, insightful um, um, advice, uh, so to speak, uh, for your right. company. Whether it's um, trying to get them uh, to 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 speak at different conferences by your uh, by utilizing your relationships or um uh, be uh, very creative with pitching or mm -hmm. uh or offering to uh have a thought leadership uh article uh where they can uh present their uh view on on the industry or in any particular development so it's 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 a very uh complex and comprehensive uh way of engaging uh media that uh, mm -hmm. provides uh, sort of a uh, sort of results that are expected and uh, that's what we try to do. I've, I've noticed one thing that uh, the the hardcore news reporter from the newsrooms, they don't they don't think much of a PR because they feel that the PR can be manipulated. So when you talk talk to like reach out to a reporter on LinkedIn, for example, and say, "Hey, I'm a public relations consultant. I'd like to work with you." First of all, they don't want to even reply to you. But if they do, they'll say. You know, we don't like PR, uh, you know, like it feels like the typical journalist feels that PR is like something they need to stay away from. What, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> yes, um, uh, I I think that's that's uh, there is there is this issue um, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the. Um, mm, Again, it's. It, I think it has to do with uh, uh, with trust mm -hmm. and with developing this trust and uh, uh, knowing, you know, the source of, uh, you know, yeah. where 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 it's coming from. Yeah. But um, I, you know, I actually that, that's. What do you think? What What do you think? I, I'll answer that. But I, I want to hear from you first. Like, what What do you think is is is? Why do you think that? And I'll, I'll add to that. What What do you think? Come on. I, I think there there is a uh, prejudice against uh, the PR and journalists. They feel mm -hmm. that I work really hard and I make this a story and these guys are just coming and pitching these stories and they are polluting the news content. That's why, you know, when we are talking to the newsrooms and say, hey, we, we send out a thousand releases, we would like to get these press releases out into your newsroom like if they have a big local newspaper for example x you know x morning news or something and, and we we'll say you know we have great stories we would like to feed into you they said no 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 we don't, we don't like those type of stories but you know but they will take them from uh, you know the big corporations i i feel there is just a prejudice uh, they, they just don't think pr as you know, legit, uh, because it can be manipulated, you know, because there's no fact fact check, you know, on PR, uh, it's just automated, pretty much, you know, you buy it, publish it, distribute it. So they, they feel yeah. not not so comfortable about it, right? I just, uh, you know. Yes, but I, I, I do think that they, mm -hmm. um, at least from my experience, obviously, it's important, impossible to get into it. Uh, yeah, uh, they, their heads, right? How they yeah. think and what they think. 
Uh, but in, in certain industries, I, I do think they, they tend to know sort of the legitimate players. I mean, and um, another thing I've noticed is it's a very interesting phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, all the sort of uh, companies and businesses that don't belong, mm -hmm. they sort of weed out. Um, yes. At least in, 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 in technology, I, I see that all the time. They don't stay. They, they may um, pay for a, a press release, an announcement, yeah. uh, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't last. And, you know, when you're in this business for three, four, five years, all the, it, it, it really, like in anything else, it's, it's, it becomes a sort of a closed community, a closed circle of people you keep running over or you, understand, you see the same people, same companies. And well, I mean, there are always new players, yeah. right? But uh, if they're um, legitimate and large players and um, worth attention, then they get that attention and they, they get uh, included into this yeah. uh, sort of community. Um, but I think it's in every industry. It's it's like that, and uh, that's in, true. And our well, industry, that is very true. Yeah. So uh, that's it's sort of a self monitoring, self control, and uh, you know when when you send uh, a lot of um, uh, pitches. I'll give another example. When you send a lot of uh, uh, pitches to uh, journalists, right? I mean, they're, they're they're monitoring tools, whether they use like Decision or Meltwater or any other yeah. system. They're, there, there are these monitoring tools that allow you to sort of analyze your unsubscribe rate and your open rate and, and so on and so forth. So you can see as a source of um, delivering uh, press release, not only through the wires, but also through yeah. sometimes sending directly to uh, your uh, targeted journalists, right? Because you can simultaneously do that as well. Yeah. Um, and you can see whether how they react, how people react to it. And uh, obviously, they're all opted in. You're not spamming anybody, but uh, yeah. you, you send it to opted in uh, contacts, and you you know it becomes a newsletter. They they become your readers, even though they yeah. may not react to your announcement immediately. Uh, they could put it in the back of their head, you know, the back of their mind, and they may act on it when the time comes when they are working on a a story. Spe that especially is true um, uh, for um, large outlets such as Forbes, Bloomberg, and yeah. CNBC and others uh, that are highly desired by many, many technology clients. Uh, so to because, wrap up, um, yeah. to, uh, to wrap up, uh, what is one key takeaway that you will give somebody that is listening to this podcast that to build credibility and to send out PR, what, what is one thing that Dennis would say uh, <laughs> uh, in, in uh, 60 seconds or less? Uh, I'll try. Uh, well, I think that it's very important to uh, develop quality messaging, mm -hmm. find the right target, the right audience, uh, find a very reputable PR partner or partners, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, don't have gaps. Do okay. not have gaps. I think the most important thing is to be consistent with your PR efforts. Is is because attention span is short. And you have to make sure you engage audience consistently. Um, yeah, I would say I would say that probably that's one of the most important. That's a great key things. takeaway: no spam, don't build gaps, and be a trustworthy partner. Find a trustworthy partner. Uh, thank you so much for your my pleasure insight for product announcements PR in 2022. We'll be talking more around the middle of 2020 to see how we are doing. Thanks for uh, coming over. Um, and we'll be talking, um, if you want to leave, how they can find you, what's the information, where, where can they find you? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, my email is uh, Dennis with one N, D-E-N-I-S at thronepr.com. Thronepr is one word. Dennis at thronepr.com. And uh, Kamar, thank you for, for, uh, for having me here. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Wonderful. Bye.